Hi and welcome to the first video on the Chem 5 series. So we're going to be looking at thermodynamics here. So in the next video I'll go through entropy, um, but first off we'll just get the bone harbor cycles out of the way. So I've got a bone harbor cycle on the board behind me and what I'll do is I'll actually talk you through it. And once you're used to how to actually lay it out, inserting the numbers in when doing the calculation should be a breeze for you. Now, each of these at length will be changes. You do need to know the full definition for them. Again, these should be easy marks in your exam. It's just chimps remembering things. So write them down again and again, memorize them. Hopefully, if I can use the video editor, they should appear on your screen in about two seconds. If that didn't work and I'm just standing here awkward, then you've got a textbook. Go away, look them up and write them out in your notes. Saves me writing them on the board and you just listening. Right, so I'll go through the actual steps. So as we can see here, we've got our starting material. We've got the magnesium solid, we've got a chlorine gas. I want to stick them together to form the magnesium chloride ionic compound. So in order to do that, I need to get to this stage here where I've got some ions because obviously an ionic bond is the electrostatic attraction between the oppositely charged ions. So as you can see up there, oppositely charged. Now in order to get the magnesium into this state first of all, you'll notice I'm starting with a solid. Well if I need to ionize it, first of all I need to get it into a gaseous form. So this is what the enthalpy of atomization here is. I'm actually turning it into gaseous atoms. So as you can see there, the solid has turned into a gas. Now this is all on an energy scale by the way, so you'll notice I'm going up. I've had to actually put energy in, so it's positive. I've got to smash up this solid structure and turn it into gaseous atoms, so that's why going up. Now the next stage, as you can see, chlorine's still the same there. I've went from the magnesium neutral species to the singly positively charged ion. So I've smacked an electron out. So this is the ionization, so the first ionization. So that goes right the way back to when you saw that in Chem 1. Now the next step, you'll notice here I'm up to 2 plus, so it's just the second ionization energy. So all your subsequent ionization energies after the first, you do need to do them. You can't just multiply this one by 2 if you want to go from the magnesium to the magnesium 2 plus because the second ionization energy it's going to be bigger than the first because you're trying to remove an electron from a positively charged species. So it might just be a little bit more or it could be a lot more if you're having to reach into an inner shell and obviously less radius, less shielding, again right the way back to Chem 1 knowledge. If you had something like sodium oxide, however, where I just need to make the sodium a singly positively charged ion, but I need two of them, then obviously you would do two times the first ionization of sodium, so that you produce two sodium singly positively charged ions. We'll see that across here in a second when I talk about the, the chlorine to chloride. So we've got the magnesium ready there. Now again we've got the chlorine molecule. I need to have atoms. So the atomization here, atomization is to produce one mole. You'll notice there I'm producing two. So if you were given a value for atomization you would need to double it because you are producing two there. Be very careful on what number you were actually given. If you are given enthalpy of atomization, that is the number to produce one here. So obviously in our case, we would need to double it. If you are given bond dissociation, in other words, the mean bond enthalpy, then 
that would be the value to crack open the bond in there so that would automatically produce two so what you'll notice is if you look at the enthalpy of atomization for chlorine and the bond dissociation value for chlorine then the bond dissociation is double purely because you're producing double the amount by cracking the bond the atomization only produces one right so we've atomized that up there now the chlorine we need to add electrons to now chlorine it wants to take in those electrons which is why it's exothermic we drop down across here so the chlorine the neutral species there it takes in these electrons and becomes the chloride now I would need to do two times the electron affinity for chlorine here because I'm adding one electron to the first and then one electron to the second so two times the first electron affinity there now something to be aware of general knowledge style is if you had to do a second electron affinity on something say if I was dealing with magnesium oxide and I need to get that O2 minus the first electron affinity is always negative because you've got the neutral species the nucleus in there attracting the incoming electrons and it releases some energy doing that however once you've got that negatively charged species if you try to add another electron well you're gonna have repulsion between the two negative charges so you need to put in energy to shove them together so your second electron affinities will always be positive and if you try to do a third so forth it would become really positive because you're trying to add to a two minus now now this across here this is the lattice enthalpy of formation so it's a bit different to the the enthalpy of formation across there what it is it's the coming together of these ions in order to stick them together to form the ionic compound so if that's simple terms again look up the proper definition um, if you hear about lattice enthalpy of dissociation that's starting with your ionic compound and smashing it apart back to those so formation should be the exothermic coming together endothermic would be positive having to break apart because obviously these are attracted to each other you've got to put in energy to snap them up so it would just be a case of putting the numbers into your cycle now the easiest way to actually work these out the enthalpy of formation here equals everything else added together because Hess's law applies to Born Harbor cycles you should be able to see two clear routes around this if I'm starting here I can just drop straight down and I'm there towards the product or I can take this long winded route coming all the way around and down like that so the enthalpy of formation equals everything else added together and a little bit of rearrangement if you knew this but didn't know that then it would just be a case of subtracting things over onto the other side so that's the the Born Harbor cycle set up now a bit of the theory about it so we'll start off with this lattice enthalpy of formation across here what makes some of the values bigger or smaller than others so to start with we'll talk about what a perfect ionic model is now a perfect ionic model is where your ions exist as point charges in other words no size all that positive or negative charge crammed within a single dot basically and obviously with that you would have an extremely high density of charge and then the, the full attraction between those so the more you get towards that the stronger the attraction is going to be now obviously everything has size so the problem is if we look at something like this where we've got a big positive and a big negative then what will happen there is the density of the charge is quite spread out so there wouldn't really be much attraction between those if I wanted to increase the attraction what I could do is decrease the size of them so there now with the density of the charge being crammed into a smaller area there would be more attraction between them 
And again, if I wanted to increase it even further, what I could have is 2 plus and 2 negative, and then there would be even more traction between them now. So there are exam questions talking about um, calcium fluoride and calcium chloride, and which one would have the, the bigger lattice enthalpy of formation. Then in this case, it would be the calcium fluoride, because the, the fluoride is smaller. So there would be more traction between the fluoride and the calcium as opposed to this because it's big and fleshy. Whereas the fluoride would be much smaller so there would be more traction to it. So that's how to look at the lattice enthalpies of formation. <clears throat> now the other thing to be aware of is the enthalpy of formation across here so delta hf so this is what you looked at back in chem 2 when you were doing hess's cycles and the formation then so actually making things from their elements in the standard state you can see here so the element standard state we made the ionic compound magnesium chloride now with this being purely theoretical it's all based on that perfect ionic model what i said the point charges it assumes no covalent character now, there is no such thing as 100% ionic. Everything has some covalent character. It just depends to what extent. Now, the reason for that is... If I take that for an example, I've got a small positively charged ion, I've got a big fleshy negatively charged ion, then the electron, which is floating around on the outside of this it's not really feeling much attraction towards the nucleus in the middle lots of radius lots of shielding so the nucleus doesn't have a strong grip now what happens is if this positively charged ion approaches that some of the electron cloud around here begins to distort its classed as being polarized so this ion polarizes the negatively charged one. And what you see, obviously not as scraggly and weird as that, but is a bit of distortion, the electron cloud overlaps. Now this overlap area is what's classed as sort of covalent character, because a covalent bond is where the electron cloud is shared, the shared pair of electrons as such. So the bigger this overlap area, the more covalent character you've got. Now what determines that? Well if you want your positively charged ion to attract this negative cloud, you want a very small positive ion, because then all that positive density is concentrated in a small area. And you want a big negatively charged one, because then the attraction isn't much between them. So that would give you something with covalent character. Now the more covalent character you've got, the more your value for the theoretical will differ from the experimental. So the more covalent character, the experimental will be different to this. So the theoretical one would usually be more exothermic than this one because of the covalent character in this. Um, I think that's more I sit whizzing through this. There is the hydration and solution one. I'll do that in a moment. I just need to check on the battery. Right, okay, all right. I'll talk through a bone harbor cycle with the numbers. I'm not going to draw the full cycle out. Um, you can relate it back to the magnesium chloride, which I did at the start of the video. Right, so in this one, I've got aluminium oxide, so quite complex, probably as far as you're actually going to go with them. And what the question's asking me to find out is the lattice enthalpy for aluminium oxide. Now, I've been given a whole raft load of numbers here, so let's start by plugging in what we actually know. So, as I said in the previous video, a shorthand way to actually think of these is the enthalpy of formation equals everything else added together. So we'll start with that basis. 
I've been given the enthalpy of formation down here. Right, and that equals everything else. So we need to talk through what we are actually going to be doing here. So looking at the compound, I've got two aluminiums. So I need to do two times the atomization of aluminium. So that is given here. Now, once I've atomized the aluminium, we should be able to look at this and think of what charge we actually need to get up to. Oxygen, obviously the oxide exists as two minus. We've got three of those. That's six minus overall. So thinking back to sort of your redox and such like that, the aluminium should exist as three plus. So I need to get two aluminiums right the way up to a three plus charge. So in other words, I need to do two times the first ionization energy plus two times the second plus two times the third there Right, so my, my aluminiums are ready now. They've been atomized, they've been ionized, so we've got those at the top sort of ready to join. We just need to get the, the oxygens into the oxide form to get them to be ready to go ionically join with the aluminium. So oxygen obviously goes around as O2. We've been given the atomization value here to produce a single oxygen atom. Now I need to produce three oxygen atoms. So I'm going to do three times this value. So I'll just stick a little note above them so you know what we're actually looking at. So this was the ionization energy there. So first, second, and the third one across here. And this is the atomization for oxygen and the atomization for aluminium there. So we've atomized the oxygen. Now we need to start shoving electrons in. We can see here there is the first electron affinity and the second electron affinity. So again, linking back in the previous video, as a well continuing then this being positive is because you're trying to add electrons to a negatively charged species now and how many oxygens have we got well we've got three oxygen atoms so I need to do three times this and three times this Right, so we've got our aluminium ions, we've got our oxides there, so the only other thing is for them to come together now and form that ionic compound. So that is your lattice enthalpy of formation. So this is what we are looking for. Now mathematically all I need to do, I haven't brought a calculator down with me, but hopefully you can punch things in, as I said, chimp finger style into it. If you add together all of these numbers here, then all you need to do, your formation value there, we are going to take them across to that side. So this is definitely going to be positive. So you would just do this, take away the number here, and that will give you the lattice enthalpy of formation for aluminium oxide. So you can try that. Um, if anybody asks, I'll reply once I've got a calculator and done it myself. But it shouldn't be too hard. Okay, so there's a quick run through of probably the biggest one you'll actually find.